and welcome back to Regina 120. I am Jeff Cliff and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a computer science student at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about the politician's syllogism, or the politician's fallacy, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, this actually comes from a TV show uh, in the 80s called Yes Minister, or Yes Prime Minister. Uh, apparently it's really good, although I haven't seen any of them. Uh, but it, it goes something along the lines of this. I'm not sure if you can see, but it goes we, or we must do something, or something must be done. Uh, X is something, therefore we must do X. And it's kind of named, obviously, after politicians who will employ this kind of logic uh, often enough. And uh, so the, the, the problem is, is that this X is something we must do X uh, doesn't necessarily follow uh, from this, this first claim here. So. There, there may be many things that you could do, and uh, there's never a, a uh, or, or if, if you know this, we must do X is even true at all. There must be some backing or reason why X is the something, as opposed to other things that could be done. There, there's there's a, a a way of kind of looking at this to uh, perhaps make it a little bit more clear, which is, you know, to improve things, things must change. We are changing things, therefore we are improving things. If you go back in a couple of videos, that's basically the same argument as uh, affirming the consequent. And so you can see fallacies like that can be brought out from this particular form. Uh, and it's worth uh, noting that we don't have to be paralyzed by uh, our fear of this particular type of thing. Uh, action, all, all sorts of action, both on the personal level all the way up to the the political level, at the level of a nation state, you know, actions have to happen and you have to justify actions. And justifications are not always going to be crisp and, uh, you know, easily to define uh, that are, you know, such that the, the justification necessarily leads to X is the only something. Remember, only is probably the the word that should be in there but isn't in the, the form of that's actually a logical fallacy. And so it, it's worth noting that I as long as we're careful which action is needed and whether or not action at all uh, can be justified. Because occasionally there's uh, you know all of the options and all the actions you can take end up with worse outcomes than just merely doing nothing. And so in those cases no action is in fact needed. Um, so here, here's some examples of how how this has come out in practice. Kind of looking at the the you know, Can Canadian election, what are the parties talking about right now? Uh, so here here's one example from the conservative side. Uh, quote: We have a def or not a quote, but uh, we have a deficit. Uh, so we're we're constantly you know bleeding money at the federal uh, government level. Uh, so something must be done about that. Uh, you know, cutting health care is something. So therefore, we have to cut health care. Well. There's a lot of ways that you could solve the problem of having a, a deficit or, or a large debt uh, at the federal level. And cutting health care may even be one of them. But it's not necessarily the only one. It certainly isn't the, the best of the options available. Uh, for example, uh, we built a, you know, a very expensive gazebo uh, not that long ago here in Ontario. Uh, that's something that could have gone to health care. And similar gazebos in the future may be something that should be on the cutting block before we get to healthcare and hollowing out the healthcare system. Uh, so it, it, it just goes to show that there's there's pretty much an anything that the politi politicians are going to suggest. Uh, they're, they're very seldom going to bring up all of the evidence and all of their reasoning for justifying it, although they may give lip service to it. Uh, most of the time they don't have really a lot of time for that. As, as we kind of talked about in the last video, sometimes the media that allows you to communicate with politicians isn't deep enough to allow you to, to really get a sense of why they want to do the things that they want to do. 
Sometimes those, the, those reasons are justified by evidence. Sometimes they're just ju justified by whatever special in interest group has the ear of those politicians. In those cases, it's hard to tell. This is one of those cases. Here's another example, pulled right from the conservative Facebook page today. Uh, illicit drugs destroy lives, they rob people of their future, they tear families apart, they make our streets less safe, they lay waste to our communities. Okay, let's accept all of that for the moment. Therefore, we should uh, change the policies that allow doctors to use drugs that we don't like, uh, and we'll change those policies so that they can't use or prescribe those drugs. Because somehow the Conservative Party of Canada is a better source of medical information than the medical establishment in Canada. That, that's kind of a strange thing. But here's another thing that they're going to change. They're going to ignore whether or not injection sites work and require the community and police to be on board before they're allowed in a community. Now, there may be reasons why you would want or wouldn't want to kind of steamroll over a community's desire to have or to not have an injection site. But the, the, there is this missing connection between the illicit drugs destroy lives and, you know, therefore we have to do something about this. And, you know, therefore we'll do this uh, changing whether in injection sites are allowed based on whether police, you know, want them in, in their area or not. There, there's these, you know, all sorts of gaps in this logic. And so... Uh, it, it's worth pointing them out, it's worth, you know, understanding them. If, if that's close enough for your purposes, and if, if you can, you know, accept that as a, you know, close enough for saving people's lives in that case, you know, perhaps that's justifiable. But, you know, it, it may not be, so it's worth keeping it in mind. Here's one from the NDP, you know, quote, Canadians are struggling to get decent, good-paying jobs, something must be done, therefore we're going to cut small business taxes by a marginal amount from 11% to 9%. Okay, well, you know, maybe it's a good idea to cut small business taxes from a marginal percent or amount from 11 to 9 percent. I, I, I you know, don't want to even plant anything in your mind that says that that's not right. But it, it's worth considering that there, there's this huge leap being made between, you know, the lack of decent, good-paying jobs and some, you know, tax breaks for small businesses. Now, of course, the NDP could and probably in some cases do, you know, draw out the full argument so that, you know, you're, you, you point out that the, the small businesses do have a, a larger propensity of hiring for every, you know, dollar that they get uh, compared to other actors in the Canadian economy. And you could, you know, go through all the, the level of details of connecting that to uh, the, the lack of jobs, but they didn't. All they did is they just pointed out that there's this lack of good paying jobs and what they're going to do about it, as if that's the only thing that could be done to make good paying jobs in Canada. Of course it's not. There's a lot of things the government could do. They could increase the, the, the or they, they could cut taxes to small business from a larger amount. They could cut taxes to small business for a smaller amount. They could even hire people directly. They're the government. They, they have the power to do that. Uh, these are all options on the table that could be discussed in the political arena. They chose to focus on that one specific thing. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it, it's necessary to do that, but uh, that is, of course, not necessarily logically valid for them to have done. Here's an example from the liberal side. Uh, quote, I'm not ready to stand as the economy slides into recession. You know, this is Justin Trudeau saying what he's ready to do is, you know, make the wealthy pay more tax and the middle class pay less tax. Okay, well, there's, again, this, this kind of missing uh, justification uh, where, yes, there, there, there may be a connection between re recession and, you know, the, the wealthy paying, you know, too m or not enough tax, uh, but he doesn't actually make that specific connection clear. And so there's this, again, missing gap in his argument, a missing gap in his logic. Maybe it's a good idea to have the wealthy pay more tax. Maybe it's a good idea to have the middle class pay less tax. But he doesn't say this, and he, he, he certainly doesn't explain the, to a level of detail where he, he could be believed. What he does do is he, he kind of talks to the people who already believe what he's proposing and kind of reinforces their belief. So he's not necessarily arguing for something, he's just saying what he's going to do and people can vote or not vote for him based on that. Um, so going to the Green Party, this is another example where you know housing in Canada is unaffordable to many. Uh, you know This is a su situation where something has to be done. Therefore, Elizabeth May is going to come up with some kind of a housing plan. I, you know, we haven't seen it yet, but regardless of what the plan is, uh, the, the plan is based on this, this kind of argument, this, 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 you know, these gaps between uh, 
that this is the only plan that, that you know we should do, uh, and that all al alternatives necessary may may not be a good idea to do. So, regardless, you know who comes up with the plan, what the plan is, you know we're going to have to accept and, and choose one of these plans or the, the the absence of all these plans. You know the the politicians are going to narrow our options down, but we should be aware that they're doing this, and and not just politicians, but other people who who wield power to direct action in both groups and individual level. That the, the first thing that happens very often is that the amount of actions gets kind of narrowed to a bunch of small possibilities and then you get to choose between them. Uh, if you can be aware that those are not necessarily the only possibilities, you can sometimes you know, squeak in that other possibility if, if the media allows you to do so uh, or, or whatever form of communications you're, you're using. Uh, and that may be worth doing uh, in some cases. So, uh, as usual, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to direct them uh, anywhere where this video is posted. Um, and uh, we'll see you next video. And we'll see you then.